What's going on guys, Ron Jeremy here today. Coming back at you with another video. Today we have the Cincinnati Bengals rebuild. Now, the Bengals actually have a really low overall in this game. And top three players on the board, AJ Green, Geno Atkins, and Tyler Eifert. The problem with those top three, I guess, for both the sake of this rebuild and in real life, is Tyler Eifert's been injured the entire season. And then Geno Atkins is 30 plus, I believe. And AJ Green, I think, is 29. So, these guys aren't exactly getting any younger, but um, let's go ahead and give it our best shot, see if we can turn this team into a perennial winner. This is the rest of the Bengals team that we're dealing with. Joe Mixon doesn't even have a picture. That's unfortunate. That's uh, Brian Hill. Where's Jeremy Hill? Did Jeremy Hill get released or is he injured? All right, he was just injured. Okay, I hadn't heard that he got released. That would have been a major shock and surprise to me. Take a look at the rest of this team, though. Uh, it's kind of weird. You know, you got John Ross, rookie receiver out of Washington. Hasn't really played the entire year. You have the red rifle, Andy Dalton. Is he really the answer for us at the quarterback position? He is 29, and he does have quick development. Interesting. That's This This can be a game-time decision. I'm not sure if I'm going to start Andy Dalton. I can't even tell what's more orange Andy Dalton's hair or the Bengals backdrop. I'm not even I'm not even kidding right now. That is that is interesting. That's all I'm going to say about that. Of course you have AJ Green top 5 NFL receiver. Tyler Eifert healthy is top 5 tight end. Uh, I don't won't touch much on Tyler Croft or CJ Uzoma. Is it Tyler? I, I think it is. Yeah, I don't know what I knew it. Whatever. Russell Bodine has not been all that good. Got to improve this offensive line. Andre Smith yeah, everyone on here is fairly old, except for Trey Hopkins. Brandon LaFell's got to go. we got to get better on offense. And then defensively, Vontez Perfect is really the one shining piece of this linebacking core, as Kevin Minter hasn't been much since coming over from the Cardinals. Vincent Ray is older. Nick Vigil isn't all that good. Sean Williams shouldn't be a starting safety, and neither should George Iloka at this point. He's probably, what, 28? He's 27. He's still not all that good, though. And then the cornerback group has never been solid. I mean, Adam Jones has had good seasons, but Darquez Denard has not been anything. Drake Kirkpatrick has not been anything. These are two first-round bust CBs, I would say. And then William Jackson, I have incredibly high hopes for. I think he can be a beast, but we'll see. Defensive line is sick. Carl Lawson is a stud young player. Jordan Willis can be good. And then, of course, you have Geno Atkins, Andrew Billings, Carlos Dunlap, and Michael Johnson, the veterans. So we have a bunch of talent on this roster, but it's all about you know, getting younger, even if we have to get worse for the short term at some of these positions, so we can be better for the long term. So guys like Brandon LaFell are not going to be here. There's no way I trade AJ Green. Something has to be done about these running backs, though. I got to figure out what's going on at QB. AJ McCarron's not going to be my guy. Jeff Driscoll certainly is not. But let's go ahead and get into some trades. Catastrophic errors were nearly made. I'm back in the top left. I feel like it's a, it's a bit large. But we're at large in this rebuild. Large and in charge, like Charles, like charge, like Charles in charge. I should have, I should have rehearsed that. That was bad. I, you know, on these rebuilds, it takes me about you know two and a half to three hours to record each one. But I usually do um, a rough take, so I say everything twice. So it takes me about six and a half hours per rebuild video. No, it doesn't. I don't know why. I don't know what I'm doing. Michael Johnson, Dark has an art, and a fourth round pick this year for a one next year from the Houston Texans, a three this year, and a two next year. Interesting trade, but uh, picking up some high quality picks next year, as well as a decent one this year and a third rounder. With this trade, I am trading Drake Kirkpatrick, George Iloka, and a third round pick for Levante David. George Iloka and Drake Kirkpatrick's cap hit combined is like eight mil, something insane. For their caliber of player right now we are giving up a third round pick that we just got or it might have been the one that we already had but levante david more than makes up for it as we now have two i would say very very solid outside linebackers and of course levante david and vantes perfect i could probably push vantes perfect to the inside if i want to although i more than likely will not just uh find some other better backers my dearest apologies to the chargers First of all, you have to deal with the absolute idiot that is Dean Spanos. Spanos, whatever you want to say. I think it's Spanos. And now I'm taking two extremely good players out of that elite secondary in Trevor Williams and Desmond King. 
Kevin Minter, Vincent Ray, and a fourth round pick next year gets me two extremely solid cornerback options to pair uh, with William Jackson III. And now we have three, I think, really, really good cornerback options. And I can trade Adam Jones, whose cap hit is nearly $5 million, and uh, get better in the secondary. I think I... I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. But I, I feel like this is going fairly well so far. And now Sean Williams, Brandon LaFell, and a second next year is going to get me Travis Frederick, replacing Russell Bodine. I think that's a very good option. And now his overall is still decently high at a 76 for a 25-year-old. I know that's not high, but it's it's high enough. And I still got to decide if I want Clint Bowling. He's 28, only an 81 overall. Nearly 5 million cap hit. I think I'm probably going to try and trade him. This trade is going to be Russell Bodine, Clinton Bowling for a 1 and a 4 from the Colts. I think that's very good value for us. Trying to get younger, trying to get better. I think building through the draft is one of the best ways in order to do so. Now, Jeremy Hill and Gio Bernard is going to give me Jerron Reed of the Seahawks. 83 overall, very young defensive tackle. Um, is actually really good for the Seahawks, and he's going to be really good next to Geno Atkins, who I'm definitely not going to move. Got to figure out what I want to do. Like, Carlos Dunlap is good. I, I think he should be a higher overall. But I do want Jordan Willis to play. I just don't think he's going to. But I also don't want to trade him right now. He's given, he's given me a weird look. Something's off about him. It's, regardless, it doesn't matter. Um, I think I'm just about done trading all of the non- wanted players unwanted not wanted what but uh still trying to maybe get rid of john ross no nah, i don't know tyler croft i think the red rifle's gotta go all right in a bit of a surprise trade at least for me i'm trading for another defensive tackle tyler croft the red rifle and andy dalton his hair literally blends in with the logo in the back and a third round pick for deforest buckner it's third round pick next year i'd like to like to say one of the best interior defensive linemen in the NFL, only in his second season. What I'd like to do now, I think, is maybe get rid of Jerron Reed, which I don't know how that happened, but here we are. What a cheat code. I'm trading three fairly awful defensive tackles, Ryan Glasgow, Andrew Billings, and Pat Sims, for Amari Cooper of the Raiders. 87 overall receiver. He's super young. Why is he so easy to trade for? What? That's ridiculous. Is Crabtree really that much better in, in your opinion? Game? What is that? Now AJ McCarron, Tom Johnson. That's not Tom Johnson. Tom Johnson was a defensive tackle. For the, I think he still plays that. He's on the Vikings. But anyway, a fourth round pick for the number two overall pick from the Jets. Who is that? He doesn't play. His face looks extremely familiar. TJ Johnson. Okay. Whatever. Alright, so if you guys didn't figure it out by now, I'm pretty much just tanking, but I have assembled very good pieces, very good players in place to make plays. Brought in Amari Cooper, Joe Mixon's very young and good. We got Fat Randy on the team, so that's instantly like another win or two. Defensively, safeties are terrible. Cornerbacks, I think, are great. This is such a good group of cornerbacks, pretty much the Chargers cornerbacks, and then William Jackson, but it's like the worst corners the Chargers have, which are still really good. And then defensive line, got Carl Lawson, Carlos Dunlap, Geno Atkins, and we brought in DeForest Buckner and Jerron Reed. I think it's a pretty good group of guys. Jerron Reed, I'm just going to trade next season. So, uh, yeah, I'm ready to do this. Let's go ahead and simulate to the midseason mark, see how we're doing. All right, so at the midseason mark, we are somehow 3-4. and four. I don't know how we've won that many games. It's a little bit annoying, if I'm being honest. Browns are 2-6, and six, not terrible. Jeff Driscoll is just racking in the XP, I can tell you that much. I'm not sure how. Tyler Eifert is our top free agent. Going to look to bring him back, as is Eric Winston. I don't want anyone. All right, Tyler Eifert has returned on a five- or six-year deal. Not that that's relevant because this is not going to go that long, but let's simulate to the playoffs. All right, we really, looks like, shat the bed here. Not a lot of coach XP. We finished 3-13. and 13. That is ridiculous. I'll show that I didn't force losses because, uh, yeah, we just started out decently and then just totally just lost out. That's crazy. All right. I'm not complaining, though. I like that. That's going to probably set us up as the Browns go 7-9. and nine, That's probably going to set, set us up for a near top pick. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the stats, see who did what, how well we performed. Jeff Driscoll 
not well i mean like bad badly but not all that bad he's not our quarterback in the future though joe mixon a thousand yards 11 touchdowns 3.5 on the ground is not great jeff driscoll averaged 4.8 yards per carry he's got quick development now did he always have quick development what's going on receiving amari cooper led our team and catches yards no actually just catches um, aj green had more yards and more touchdowns no 1000 yard receivers though blocking in terms of sacks andre smith led up 40 21 from eric winston oh god and then hardy nickerson led our team in tackles with 135 he looks all right Tackles for loss would be 11 from DeForest Buckner, 10 from Geno Atkins. Quarterback sacks, 16 from Carl Lawson as a rookie. Love it. Geno Atkins at 13, 8.5 for Carlos Dunlap, 7 for DeForest Buckner. Interceptions, 3 from Vontez Perfect, 3 from Levante David. Force fumbles, looks like a bunch of players had one. Yeah, nothing significant there. Fumble recovery is kind of the same deal. And then at least one defensive touchdown from Josh Shaw. He was the only one who got one. All right, let's check out awards. I think maybe Carl Lawson won Defensive Rookie of the Year as Aaron Rodgers wins MVP of the 9 and 7 Green Bay Packers. I don't expect to see any Bengals in there, and we don't. Andy Dalton was 8th in league MVP voting. Okay. AFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Tom Brady. No Bengals in there. Defensive Player of the Year, Von Miller. Hoping to see Carl Lawson, at least in the voting. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to... Leonard Fournette, Joe Mixon at number four, and then Defensive Rookie of the Year it is Carl Lawson. Love it. Hardy Nickerson at number three. Okay. That is actually awesome. That's probably going to be a ton of XP for Carl Lawson, especially if he won Pro Bowl too or Defensive Lineman of the Year, which is fairly doubtful. 66,000 XP for Carl Lawson and quick development as he made that Pro Bowl, plus 17K XP for the Pro Bowl. Plus 22,800 XP for Defensive Rookie of the Year. I saw, you know what, did John Ross have a lot of XP? Yeah, John Ross made the Pro Bowl, probably as a returner. Um, so that's awesome. Per usual, there are no free agents that I'm really interested in at all. So we're just going to go ahead and pretty much uh, do some scouting and then advance to the draft. So I will see you guys there. We should have the number one overall pick, if I'm not mistaken. Here we are in the draft. I have the number two overall pick, as well as the seventh and eleventh in the first round. Don't think we have anything down here near the tail and we don't first pick is to the bucks and they take a cornerback is it the cornerback that i potentially wanted it was okay in which case i'm going to take rashad allen number one overall he is only 5 11 but that also doesn't matter he's a bit undersized for the position he tested off the charts in terms of speed strength total athletic freak amazing top three skills for the most part here he is rashad allen yeah, um, so, so happy with that. He's ranked number 12 in the class. We took him at number 2. 80 overall, but with superstar development. And he's clearly insane. 87 speed, 91 tackle, 80 block shit, 87 hit power, 77 power moves even. Just really a jack of all trades. And now at number 7, I'm taking my quarterback, Long Onobun. Ridiculous name. Here he is. 77 overall superstar development. Since I reached, I'm okay with drafting a 77 overall superstar dev quarterback with 90 plus throw power, good throw accuracy as well. Just got to boost that deep, decent speed. I'm very happy with that selection as well. And now at 11, I'm going to be taking Perry Lindsey out of Ole Miss. Playmaker type. He's got speed. He's got good top three skills. That's what I'm looking for. Here he is. 80 overall, normal development. 15 in the draft. We took him at 11. 92 speed, 88 hit power, 82 zone. Decent overall player. Not mad at that pick one bit. In the second round, I'm going to be trading down with the Saints for a 1 and a 2 next year. Seems like a great trade to me for a, uh, a second round pick. And granted, it's like so close to a first round pick, it might as well be one. But still, that's great value to get from the Saints. The Packers just took a defensive lineman named Bakhtiari. That's funny. With this pick, though, I'm going to be taking Blair Overhauser out of Buffalo. Offensive lineman. Really good top three skills. Combine's not great. I don't really care. He is a 73 overall, ranked number 42 in the class. We take him at 85. 77 strength, 86 run block, 76 pass block, 86 impact blocking. I think another very solid player. With this pick, I'm going to take a major gamble on a right guard out of UCF. All I know is his top three skills. He's got A minus run block. It should be impact block. Hopefully he's sick. 74 overall, ranked number 53 in the class. We took him at 130. 83 strength, 81 run block, 76 pass block, 90 impact blocking. Eh... I'm going to take a more well-rounded player with this pick. He doesn't seem particularly good. Grant Chan, uh, Grant Cranchick. Oh, gross name. Out of Idaho State. 
He's just well balanced at center. He's not realistically going to play. Yeah, he's a 70 overall. You know, it's good value for the pick, but just not not as great as I want. I want an amazing pick, but I guess you can't have draft steals every single draft you do. All right, DJ Sanborn in the seventh. Show me something. Yeah, it's a good value pick, but realistically not going to play him. Well, actually, he'll probably start, but he's realistically not going to be my long-term starter at the position. Not exactly a fantastic team right now, but there has been significant improvement made after upgrading everyone. John Ross is up to an 83 overall. The offensive line is just in a really weird spot. Tyler Eifert up to a 95, but defensively, though, is really when things start to kick in. Starting that new rookie inside linebacker, I believe it's Rashad Allen. Rashad Allen. We got Sam Burns somehow starting. Uh, we got, oh man, I forgot all these names. Perry Lindsey, drafted rookie out of Ole Miss. Cornerbacks are getting a little bit better. Um, not really overall wise. <laughs> William Jackson is though. Carl Lawson is up to a 90 overall. DeForest Buckner up to a 92. And Carlos Dunlap is going down in overall somewhat quickly. Jordan Willis is going to have to take over, I think. If I can... Okay. Do you guys see this regression? That's just not acceptable. I think I'm going to try and trade Carlos Dunlap for some offensive line. And then have Jordan Willis play left end. With this trade, I'm just making a smart move. Carlos Dunlap's cap hit is 9.85 mil, which is ridiculous. Not that that really matters too much. I'm also trading a 5 this year and a 3 next year for Joel Batonio and Kevin Zeitler, bringing him back to Cincinnati uh, from the Cleveland Browns. So from one Ohio team to the other, not exactly a far trip. However, offensive line is getting better because of it. Our interior is fantastic. Only thing now is we have no tackles at all. I'm going to try to trade for some right now, maybe. All right, a one and a four is going to get me Lane Johnson, 93 overall tackle from the Philadelphia Eagles. He's going to be my bookend over on the left side, and I'm going to just probably try to trade for another right tackle. So it's, it's easier to trade for right tackles for whatever reason, and I'll just play that person at right tackle. All right, I forgot that I had Jerron Reed still on my team, so this trade just makes perfect sense. I'm trading for Brandon Scherf of the Washington Redskins. He played tackle at Iowa. And I think he could probably play tackle for me now. I'm going to play him at right tackle. And Lane Johnson is going to move over to left tackle. Actually, you know what? We're going to move Brandon Scherf to left tackle. All right, this is the new look team. Now with Brandon Scherf, Lane Johnson, Joel Batonio on our offensive line. Not to mention Kevin Zeitler is back in Cincinnati. The rest of the defense obviously stays the same. We're just going to be weak at strong safety for right now. Hopefully this season players get better i guess so i will see you at the midseason mark see you there so we're three and four at the midseason mark which doesn't make sense because that's where we are that's where we were last year and this is a much better team i don't really know what to say about it brandon scherf is a free agent which is no good we're gonna look to bring him back i guess it's not really that much of a, of a big deal geno atkins amari cooper trevor williams all here don't really care for cj uzoma so let's go ahead and bring these guys back. All four resign. Perfect. That is fantastic. I'm going to do a bit of scouting and then see you guys for the playoffs, which I think we can still make. So we did not make the playoffs again with a rookie quarterback that somewhat expected. We did go 7-9, and nine though, so uh, I guess kind of right on the edge. We'll see the stats, see how he performed and the rest of our, our rookies performed. 4,400 yards. 34 touchdowns, 17 interceptions. Not a terrible season. Not great, though. Joe Mixon is still kind of terrible. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 yards, 1,234. 9 touchdowns. Terrell Watson also had 8 touchdowns. I need to get a better backup running back. But that yards per carry is just not good. A.J. Green, nearly 1,300 yards, 9 TDs. No 1,000-yard receivers. You can see the rest there. Uh, decent seasons. Blocking. Very much improved offensive line. Love to see it. Defensively, Rashad Allen as a rookie led our team in tackles with 120. He also had a half his, or one and a half sacks and four interceptions. Tackles for loss would be 11 from Geno Atkins, eight from DeForest Buckner. QB sacks 14 and a half from Geno Atkins, 11 and a half from Jordan Willis. There we go. Nine and a half from DeForest Buckner, nine and a half from Carl Lawson. Interceptions four from rookie Rashad Allen, four Levante David, three for DJ Sanborn, three for Trevor Williams, two. For Desmond King, one for the rookie Perry Lindsley out of Ole Miss. Forced fumbles, we have four for Geno, three for Rashad Allen. Man, Rashad Allen had a season. 
He also had two fumble recoveries. Actually, that was DJ Sanborn. My bad. He also had a touchdown. Holy. So did Perry Lindsley. Both are safeties with a TD. I gotta tell you, though. We might be in the running here for some for some awards. Drew Brees on the Giants, 9-7. and seven. Interesting. Phillip Rivers wins MVP. AFC Offensive Player of the Year is also Phillip Rivers. No Bengals. Defensive Player of the Year, Reggie Ragland. Okay. Former Alabama ILB. Inside linebacker. That's what that means. Offensive Rookie of the Year is our quarterback, Long Onabun. Love to see that one. And then Defensive Rookie of the Year is Rashad Allen. I thought DJ Sanborn might have gotten the edge, but he finishes at number four. Perry Lindsley at number eight. So a very good performance from our rookies overall, I would say. Although I still probably am looking to get better at strong safety. And I found a sick one in the draft. But without further ado, let's go ahead and simulate to the offseason. See who might be in free agency and then do the draft. So I signed Fat Rob, actually, to pair with Fat Randy. So I think that is pretty cool. We got the Fat Boys in the house. Although Fat Randy's not even on the team. We got Zane Gonzalez. Probably need to uh, to go after kickers and punters, perhaps. I haven't really focused on those positions all that much. And nobody's here. I've made a move to trade up to number five with my ninth pick, as well as a second rounder. The player that I have in mind is that important that I'm willing to give up that much. And I hope he's available at number five. And he is. So here he is, Curry Church out of Notre Dame. B plus zone, B hit power, B minus pursuit. 4 4 6 40. He looks absolutely insane. We're drafting him. Here he is. 80 overall superstar development. That's what I'm talking about. Anytime I see zone that high, which I don't think I ever have, B plus is ridiculous. 90 speed, 86 zone, 84 hit power, 82 pursuit, 92 acceleration, 6 foot 2 superstar development. What a pick. Okay, big development. I've traded for Von Miller. A 1 and a 2 this year, as well as Jordan Willis for the Denver pass rusher. He is 30 years old right now at the time in this rebuild, and that's pretty much all we have in this draft, so I'm going to simulate to the end. But he's a 99 overall. He's still insane. Even if he regresses, I'd say the lowest possible overall we see Von Miller in this rebuild is a 96. Probably 97 floor. I think he would probably, if regress at all, in terms of overall, maybe to a 98, but probably will stay at a 99 for the duration. And look at the XP, 62K for Long Onabun. And we're going to have Von Miller play in defensive end, getting after the quarterback. It's going to be a good time. Yeah, we have a good amount of XP for a number of players here. I think Church is likely going to play strong safety. Yeah, that'll definitely happen. 62K XP, though. We got, we're in a really good situation. This is the team for season number three. Long Odebon is up to an 87 overall. Got Amari Cooper at a 90, John Ross 84. The receiving core is great. Offensive line is really coming together as players develop, although Kevin Zeitler is uh, not developing. He's like, what, 29, 30 right now? 29, so that's not going to work really, but he's going to stay on the team. Rashad Allen is up to an 88 overall, so that's awesome. Starting a rookie strong safety church, Curry Church. Perry Lindsley's up to an 83 overall. Cornerbacks aren't really developing all that much, but they haven't been putting up the numbers. But our defensive line has been way too much for teams to handle. And now with Von Miller out there, it should be fairly ridiculous. So AJ Green is our lead free agent here. And I can't even see our record, which is unfortunate because of our bye week. But a number of good ones. William Jackson, DeForest Buckner, AJ Green. I guess only three of them. AJ Green is 31. I'm bringing A.G. Green back, let's be real. So all three of them are back, and Tyler Boyd actually really doesn't look all that bad. I'm trying to figure out why he's only a 75 overall. I guess his speed isn't phenomenal, but he looks pretty well balanced. It looks like he should be above a 75. Release is pretty low. Um, we're not going to touch him until the end of the season. If we can get him up near 80, I'll go for a re-sign probably. But right now, I'm not going to do that. Our record is 7-1, and one, though. Okay. All right. This is what I'm talking about. This is a team that can make plays. I really don't need to do any scouting because, I mean, what position am I going to draft? Why is Fat Rob playing fullback? Oh, my goodness. Derek Castro, rookie out of UCF. You're now the fullback. Oh, my God. We started off 7-1. and one. 
and then go nine and seven and barely squeak into the wild card round of the playoffs. That is unbelievable. What happened? Hold on, hold the phone for just a minute there, guy. What happened? Okay, regular season. We lost to the Steelers in week one and then crushed the competition. And then then were annihilated by the competition. He lost to the Browns even. What is going on in this life in season three here, this Bengals rebuild? I'm not a fan. Anyway, let's check out the stats, see who did what, how we got here. Long Onobun, 4,200 yards, 28 TDs, 12 interceptions, rushing. Joe Mixon is actually awful. His yards per carry are terrible every single year, and it's this time it's 3.5 yards per carry. He had 1,100 yards and 11 touchdowns. I'm going to trade him. Amari Cooper led our team in catches yards, but had one touchdown. Tyler Eifert had six. AJ Green had 10. Missed out on 1,000 yards by 12. John Ross had 770 yards and six touchdowns. That's a weird season. Quarterback sack, 16 total, led up by our offensive line. Defensively, Rashad Allen had 117 tackles that led our team. Tackles for loss, 14 from Von Miller, who put up some crazy sack numbers. 21 and a half. 15 and a half for Carl Lawson, eight for Geno, five and a half for DeForest Buckner. Interceptions, we have three from Desmond King, two from Levante David, two from William Jackson. We don't get that many interceptions, man. Force fumbles, three from Vaughn. He also had a safety. Any defensive touchdowns? Always like to see it, but none, unfortunately. MVP, again, goes to Phillip Rivers. Blake Bortles of the Patriots? Okay. What is going on? Eli Manning of the Giants? What is... But Drew Brees... Alvin, Kam Alvin Kamara is a 99 overall. <laughs> what is going on? Phillip Rivers wins AFC Offensive Player of the Year. Uh, long Onobun in there at 10. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Von Miller. There we go. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Ja'Cory Ingram. No Bengals. Defensive Rookie of the Year, Elbert Smith. Curry Church is in there at number 6. All right, I'm going to use our XP now because I would like to get to the second round of the playoffs. I know it would be out of character, but I would like to get there. This is the upgraded team. Long Onobun's up to an 88. Joe Mixon at an 89. I need to move on from him. He's not good. Receiving core is looking nice. Offensive line also looking nice. Kevin Zeitler's up to an 87, so he actually did improve a little bit. Well, I wonder if I should start Lane Johnson at left tackle. It doesn't really matter. Rashad Allen's up to a 91. Perry Lindsley, 84. Curry Church is already up to an 85. Cornerbacks aren't moving up that much. Trevor Williams is up to an 88, though. I'd love to see that. Carl Lawson, 93. DeForest Buckner at a 94. Von Miller, of course, at a 99. Can we beat the Steelers in the wild card round of the playoffs, though? We do, actually. And we go on to face the 13-3 Houston Texans in the divisional. Winner goes to the conference championship of the AFC, and we win. Okay. Now, in the conference championship against the Kansas City Chiefs, we're going to have some XP. Uh, not really, actually. That false alarm. In uncharted waters here for the Bengals now after I spent some coach XP. Winner of this AFC Conference Championship game goes to the Super Bowl, and we do. What is going on? Now we got some XP. Long Onabun. Yeah, Offensive Player of the Week. Love it. All right, let's use some of this XP. Get him up closer to a 90. He's at an 88 now. And that 7,000 near XP did absolutely nothing. He's still an 88. Curry Church in the wild card, though, got Defensive Player of the Week. That's where that XP came from. A defensive touchdown on an interception. That's a game right there. All right, let's go ahead. Face the Saints in the Super Bowl. 92 overall to the Saints, 93. And they've got to have a good team. Not sure who their quarterback is. I might be able to find out here in just a minute if it goes through the slides. But we know their defense is amazing. We know they have a 99 overall. Alvin Kamara at running back. We know they have the playmakers, Michael Thomas, and if they've had good drafts to improve that offensive line to get a new quarterback who isn't Drew Brees, we know Drew Brees is not there. This could be a very close game. The 10-6 Saints versus the 9-7 Bengals. That might be... That might be the fewest combined wins for a Super Bowl ever. Someone fact-check me on that. I'm just I'm totally making that up, but it could be.
All right, Saints out to an early 7-0 lead. Make that 14-0. Can we please get on the board? It's 21-0, man. Now 21-7. Oh, this could be a comeback here. 21-17, 24 unanswered points for the Bengals. Oh, my goodness, what is transpiring here? 24 all. Now 31-24 here in the fourth. It's all tied up at 31. Saints make it 38. Now it's 38-38. Bengals go ahead 45-38, and that is your Super Bowl. We're going to go ahead and do a follow-up season to see if we can repeat and get this team even better as players continue to develop and progress. But what a comeback. Down 21-0 in the first quarter. That is nearly the best comeback in Super Bowl history. Shout out to the Falcons. Shout out to the Falcons. But yeah, Curry Church is sick now. He's only going to continue to get better. I don't know why I meant reference him. He was on the screen, I guess. Their quarterback is number one, but also not number one. Because he finished number two. He's shit. Not even what I'm saying, but like that's that's true. AJ Green is. Super Bowl MVP, six catches for 88 yards. It's an interesting choice. All right. Whatever. Go ahead and raise that Super Bowl trophy, AJ Green. You deserve it. Got a long Onabun up there. Also have Rashad Allen, a drafted inside linebacker. Man, we got, some, we got some playmakers on this team. I saw Joe Mixon up there. He does not deserve to be up there. He is getting traded. I can guarantee you that much. But there we go. Super Bowl champions. And let's go ahead and see if we can go ahead and repeat in a fourth season. Long Onabun th threw for 389 yards, two touchdowns. Was not Super Bowl MVP. Joe Mixon, two touchdowns on the ground for nearly 100 yards. Not Super Bowl MVP. They got to change the system about how they choose. I feel like it's so random. Yannick Ngakwe would be a sick free agent to bring in. But we don't really need him. So I don't think I'm going to be going that route. Emmanuel Sanders could be cool. He is 33 years old. Not that that matters since this is the last year. I don't really feel like we need anybody. We could use an upgrade at the cornerback position, though. That's really the one thing. The rest of the players are just going to keep developing. We could use another cornerback. Huh. Have William Jackson be our fourth. Desmond King moved into the nickel slot. That would be nice. Look at the high overalls in the Saints. Ramchek is a 99. Kamara is a 99. Michael Thomas is a 98. Marcus Lattimore, 95. Marcus Williams is a 92. Why are these overalls so ridiculously high? In the end, though, it doesn't even matter. A 1, a 2, and Fat Rob for Alvin Kamara from the New Orleans Saints. He is our new starting running back. I thought it wouldn't make a ton of sense to trade Joe Mixon. After a good Super Bowl performance, I think he salvaged his career here in Cincinnati. However, he is going to be relegated to our backup running back, which still does get a ton of attempts, so we are keeping him here. The receiving core is nice. I could use a good fourth. I need a, I need a fifth, actually, because we're playing a tight end there. I do, for certain, need better specialists, though. So we brought in Greg the Legs Zerline to be our new starting kicker which is solid and i'm looking to bring in a new punter as well i don't have any picks so there's no real need to do the draft i went after matt bosher he actually accepts so we're golden i'm gonna go ahead and simulate to the next season so i do still want to improve at cornerback but i think that's just going to be out uh out of the question i just don't think we can and i would like to upgrade my players all at once but it's currently not an option I feel like the more and more I play, the more glitches and errors I've been finding lately in Madden franchise mode with the scouting. There's It was glitched last time. It's glitched again. No players are available in the view. I just did auto upgrade. And there's nobody here. That's not even an option. I pressed Y or triangle, excuse me. Nobody's here. So, I mean, I, I can't even see what I'm doing. And I don't think that even touches anybody it does actually all right well i figured out that glitch but that's so stupid anyway this is the team for the fourth and final season it looks absolutely spectacular except for cornerbacks could be better the secondary could be better but they're all super young players defensive line is sick linebackers are sick offensive line receiving core backfield sick we're money i'll see you guys actually at the playoffs boom we're going we're going there. 12 and 4. 
we crushed it. Somebody regressed. It doesn't matter. Uh, and I have a ton of coach XP. Kind of wonder how we got there. I don't even need it. So let's go ahead and check out the stats. See who did what. Looks like nearly 4,500 yards for long on 36 touchdowns, 20 picks. Not a great season. Throwing a lot of interceptions. Rushing. Alvin Kamara absolutely went off. Five and a half on the ground. 1660 yards rushing, 11 touchdowns. Joe Mixon as a backup had 635 yards and 14 touchdowns. And yards per carry is still awful. At least he didn't put the ball on the ground. Receiving A.J. Green, 1,300 yards on 92 catches, 10 touchdowns, 7 touchdowns for Cooper. John Ross actually had over 1,000 yards and 6 touchdowns as well. Blocking, uh, no one really let up too many sacks. Defensively, Rashad Allen led our team in tackles with 120. Tackles for loss would be 12 for Von Miller. Carl Lawson, DeForest Buckner both had 11. And then look at the stats again, or sacks, excuse me. 21 sacks for Von Miller, 17 for Carl Lawson, 10.5 for DeForest Buckner. This is absolutely an insane D-line. Interceptions, four for Desmond King, three for William Jackson, two for Curry Church and Levante David. Not many interceptions, but we just got so many sacks they couldn't really even throw interceptions. We forced three fumbles only on the entire year with that many sacks. Man, I really wish they'd fix simulation. One defensive touchdown, that was for Trevor Williams. We had the second most offensive yards in the league, which is cool. Deshaun Watson wins MVP of the 15-1 Texans. Oh, boy. Where are the Bengals in here? Long Unabun finishes at number nine in MVP. AFC Offensive Player of the Year, Deshaun Watson. Alvin Kamara at number seven. Long Unabun at number 10. Defensive Player of the Year is J.J. Watt. Von Miller at three. Carl Lawson at eight. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Gabriel Church. I don't expect to see any Bengals in here for rookies. We didn't draft anybody. But we get the first round by, which is solid. I have so much coach XP, I don't even know what to do with it. And let's go ahead and I don't I don't even know how we're in the wild card. We went 12 and 4. Two other teams in the AFC outperformed us. That's wild. Alright, let's go ahead and advance to the divisional. Please can we not lose to the Jaguars? We lost to the Jags. I didn't even upgrade the team. Alright, tell you what, I'll make you a deal. I'm going to bring everybody back, simulate straight to the next playoffs, and then see you there. No offseason, nothing. This team added again. We're going to the playoffs right now. When I snap, we're going to be there. Ow, fuck. God, I fucked. I had a jam finger. That was stupid of me. All right, so we're coming up on the playoffs. The problem is players regressed, and I didn't use any of our XP. So we might not even make the playoffs. I think we will, though. It's still a good team. We did it. Okay, we went 13-3. and three. Extremely solid. Players regressed, though, which is bad. <laughs> Obviously, Long Unabun, 4,000 yards, 36 touchdowns, 10 interceptions, rushing. Alvin Kamara, 1,500 yards, 6 touchdowns, 16 for Joe Mixon. I'm just going to go through this quickly for the highlights. Mari Cooper, 1,300 yards, 13 TDs, blocking, doesn't really matter. Defensively, Rashad, Rashad Allen, 137 tackles. QB sacks, 20 and a half for Vaughn, 16 for Carl Lawson. Interceptions. Six for Trevor Williams, five for William Jackson, four for Perry Lindsley. Where did the interceptions? These kind of came out of nowhere. Where did these come from? A uh, decent amount of forced fumbles, it looks like. Yeah, and then defensive touchdowns. To see at least one, Trevor Williams and Alan Jordan, a rookie. MVP goes to Derek Hushmanzada of the Chargers. Guess a rookie QB. Any Bengals? Yeah, long on at eight. AFC Office Player of the Year just goes to Hushmanzada. Long Unabun at 7. Defense Player of the Year, Martrell Spate. What? Von Miller at 2. Martrell Spate. Okay, Rashad Allen at 4. Rookie of the Year. We got Matt Deku. Any Bengals? No. Defense Rookie of the Year. Oh, we got two Bengals in there. Reed Schmeing and Allen Jordan. All right, so clearly after two seasons, we have a lot of XP to spend. So we should be able to crush the competition. That's the goal anyway. Let me go ahead and use this XP and then face whoever we have to face in the divisional. This is the upgraded team, and it is insane. Of course, regression has hit AJ Green fairly hard. Tyler Eifert, kind of the same deal. Pieces of the offensive line, Kevin Zeitler. But Long Onabun's up to a 98 overall. The overalls are really, really high for some of these players. Carl Lawson's at a 99. Geno Atkins is down to an 85. But the cornerbacks are pretty sick ish. Safeties are sick-ish. Curry Church is in the 90. We're kind of all over the place here. 
let's go ahead and face the Steelers in the divisional. I don't know how we're in 2021 20, right now. This just went way further than I ever expected. And all that to lose first round. See ya. Take it easy. Can't believe it. This shit don't run well.